Okay, students, <clears throat> my uh, input pad is broken, so I'm going to have to use the mouse to write, so it's not going to be as quick or as fun as usual, but I will certainly give you enough information to help you do very well on this test, in addition to, of course, practicing all of the problems. So I'm going to focus on 9R <clears throat> and 9RA and 9RB worksheets, um, but please be sure to do the other worksheets. And remember, on the drive is an answer key for every worksheet from this unit. Make sure you practice every problem and you can do every problem and use those answer keys as your primary uh, checking method to see how well you did in the problem. They include all of the steps that you need. Okay, so on this page here, <clears throat> I've got all the different shapes, actually at least samples of all the different shapes because there are more prisms and more pyramids. For example, there's triangular prisms, which we've done in some of the problems, triangular-based prisms. So uh, they're not all here, but I'm going to just give you an overview. On this page, we're also going to talk about what to memorize and what not to memorize. So anything I write in green, you have to know that formula. It's basically all the easy ones. And what I write in red, um, you don't have to worry about. We're going to give you those formulas on the test. Okay? So with our five different classes of shapes here, we have prisms. And remember that prisms have two identical bases that are parallel to each other. And then they have parallelograms for the sides. Notice we're going to focus only on right prisms and right pyramids and <clears throat> right cones um, because we're not going to be giving you oblique on the test just to make everybody's life easy. Um, so really they're going to, prisms are going to have for our purposes the rectangular uh, faces, right? So what's the formula you have to know? You have to know this formula, right? I'm going to put it in green. So for prisms the volume equals the base area times the height, right? Base area times the height. Okay, so for example, in this guy, the base area, this is a cube, would be, you know, length times width, right? So the dimensions of the base multiplied together, and then times the height, which would be here. Okay, um, now this guy, and we told you this is going to be on the test, it was on the last test, it's going to be on this test, it's going to be on the final, is the base is a hexagon, right? This is a hexagon. Um, apologies for the writing attempt here. Okay, so that's a hexagon. So you're going to have to use what you know how to do, and it's on a previous video from Unit 7, I think it was. We've certainly done it in the solution guides that are on the drive. Uh, you can Google how to find the area of a hexagon. Basically, you draw, and it will be a regular hexagon, so you draw an equilateral triangle, and you find the area of that triangle multiplied by six. We've done it so many times, and still people are getting it wrong in the test, so be sure you know how to find the area of a hexagon. So this base area here, right, this base area will vary. So it'll be either a rectangle, it could be a triangle, it could be a right triangle, it could be an equilateral triangle, or it could be a hexagon. Um, it could be any other shape, but those are the ones that we've done mostly in class. Um, you also have to know the surface area of a prism, and the surface area is very easy too, right? The surface area is just all of the sides added together, right? And so in these two, there's six sides. In this one, there are the two bases and six sides, so that's eight sides, right? So what we basically do is we say, use both bases, so that's two BA, right? Two base areas. BA stands for base area. So, for example, in this hexagonal prism here, you'd add the two hexagons, right? One, two. And then you add all of the faces, right? Which sometimes are the same as in the case of this guy, but in other cases are not. We have a special name for all the faces added together. We call it the lateral area, right? This just basically means all the other sides. So in this hexagon example right here, if, you, if I asked you to find the surface area, you'd have to add the two bases, one and two, those two hexagons, and then six rectangles. They're all the same size in this case, but not in this case, right? So here, you have to be careful when you do the lateral area, right? There's um, four different, well, the opposite ones are the same, but you have to add them all up. So basically, you just look at all the dimensions, and we'll do some examples of that later. All right, you have to know those formulas. For a cylinder, 
Guess what? It's the same thing. V equals base area times height. I should, probably should have just copied and pasted, right? Base area times height. And for the surface area, you don't have to memorize it, right? We're going to give you this formula, okay? Uh, and I won't write it because you already have it, and it's going to be given to you, right? And I'll use it during the problems, too. And it's on all the solution guides. I just can't write very well here with this. So, uh, the hardware broken. So you're going to need to know the surface of area of a cylinder, which is 2 pi r squared plus pi r l. All right, let's go to pyramids. So for pyramids, it's the same thing, right? Pyramids and cones have the same formulas as prisms and cylinders for volume, except for one thing, right? Any shape that comes to a point, any shape that comes to a point, it's one third, right? So the volume for both of these guys, really, Volume for both these guys is just one third, right, times base area times height. And you have to know that. All right, and then you don't have to know surface area. There, uh, there. Uh, we're not going to do surface area for pyramids at all, so you don't have to worry about that at all. But for cones, you will. You'll have to know the surface area formula. Uh, oh, I think I said the surface area wrong. Uh, Form formula wrong for a cylinder, but again, we're going to give it to you, so don't worry about it. I think it's pi, uh, it's 2 pi r squared plus 2 pi r h, plus 2 pi r h. My apologies for that. This one is the one that's pi r squared plus pi r l. All right, again, no worries. You're going to be given both of these formulas on the uh, actual test, okay? But I did say this one wrong, so just make sure you fix it. But you have them in your notes already. Just use your notes to look them up, but you don't have to know them. Just use them for the problems. We're going to give them to you. And then for a sphere, same thing. We're going to give you volume, which is 4 thirds pi r cubed. And we're going to give you surface area, which is 4 pi r squared. Okay? Both of them will be given to you on the test. So that's it. That's pretty much what you have to memorize. Now, what else do you have to know, right? I'm going to maybe try it with text box here because uh, it'll be easier to type. Let's put some stu you know, stuff you need to know, right? You need to know... Um, need to know area of a hexagon. In order to do an area of a hexagon, you need to know the area of equilateral triangle. Okay, and in order to find the area of an equilateral triangle, you have to know all the special right triangle rules, right? So 30, 60, 90, and 45, 45, 90 rule. All this is a review, right? Shouldn't be new to anybody. Area hexagon we've had on previous tests. Area of equilateral triangle, of course, we have 30, 60, 90, 45, 45, 90 triangles. Uh, Pythagorean theorem. And um, area of a regular triangle, right? Area of, a, I'm sorry, of a right triangle, of a right triangle. Okay, so area of an equilateral triangle, you've got to draw the altitude. You have to drop the altitude, right? For the area of a right triangle, we've said this many, many times, it's just one half base times height, where the base and the height are the legs of the right triangle, right? And you'll see those right throughout the example. Uh, and I think that's, you know, other than area of a rectangle, which you know, of course, base times height, um, that's, oh, any area of a circle, right? So I mean, these are so ridiculously obvious, area of circle. Uh, so that's all the formulas. Again, not formulas so much because you know them so well, but uh, in hexagon, you have to kind of derive it, as we've done many times, using the equilateral triangle and multiplying it by 6. But so all of these things, which is all review, and we've done many, many, many times, and they're all done on all of the answer keys from this unit and previous units. <coughs> Excuse me, and you can always look up a video for any one of these that you might not know. Uh, the other thing is, although Pythagorean theorem is fine, of course, we know some triplets, which save us time. You don't have to memorize these. I highly recommend you do. They're on SATs. Those are just the same one. And then, of course, the 5, 12, 13. Um, so those three triplets we use a lot. What all that means is if you have a right triangle, only a right triangle, and you see two of the sides, right? Like you see a 3 for a leg and a 5 for the hypotenuse. Then you know that the other leg is 4, right? They're just... They're common triplets, right? They're common uh, side ratios for right triangles, 
And remember, the highest number is always the hypotenuse. The 5, the 10, the 13 has to be the hypotenuse. So if you see a 13 on a leg, it's not going to help you. It's not going to be one of these. All right. And usually the right triangles we give you is one of these three. And it's certainly the same way on the SATs, so you should know those. All right, that's everything you have to know for the test. Most of it you already do. Probably shouldn't be a ton of memorization that you're going to be doing uh, Sunday night. All the red ones we're going to give to you, and we've already given them to you in your notes, and we'll give them to you on the test. Okay, so uh, I think this was the hardest problem that we gave you, just not math-wise per se, but just because we haven't done sectors uh, in this unit, right? But if we look here and we we see this is a 45 degree wedge. We just use our knowledge of what we learned about with sectors. That 45 is some fraction of the full cheese wheel, right? In other words, all of the slices, right? And that 45 is out of a possible 360, right? So if we write 45 over 360, we get a nice ratio. And of course you can reduce this ratio and you don't even have to, for easy ones like 45 or 90 or 60, you can kind of just know in your head that it's 1 eighth, right? In this case, 1 eighth, right? You know 90 degrees is a quarter of a circle, so 45 must be 1 eighth. So you can just jump to 1 eighth, you don't have to actually write 45 over 360, okay? If we put this, if we change this 45 to be a 60, if we change it to be a 60, for example, Right? What fraction of a full circle would it be? It would be one-sixth. Okay? Very obvious. We've done it many times when we did sectors. So what does that mean? That means that <clears throat> this wedge, right, this wedge is only an eighth of the total volume. And we know how to find total volume of the shape, which is a cylinder, of course. So what we're going to do is find the volume of a cylinder and then multiply it by one-eighth. Now that gives me the volume of the wedge doesn't give me the volume of the answer to the problem. It says how much cheese is left. And remember, I always recommend you underline the questions, right? Is left is the key here after the wedge below is cut from it. So you can go ahead and find 1 eighth if you want to, which is what I'm going to do, and then subtract it from the total, okay? Or you could just do 7 eighths. As many of you figured out, you're like, well, listen, if I'm going to cut out 1 eighth, that leaves 7 eighths. So why not just do that right off the bat, okay? Um, I'm going to do... Uh, one eighth. Okay, so um, and you know what you write here. Remember, every volume should have a subscript, right? So um, I, you could write slice if you want, right, or wedge, whatever you want to write here. Just as long as we know we differentiate it from, and you can sorry about that, uh, from what else that we're going to write, that would be fine. So we're going to get one eighth of the volume of a cylinder. Okay, now what's the volume of a cylinder? Well, we know. Uh, it's always base area times height, right? Base area times height. And when we substitute, we always like to use parentheses. Mine will look terrible because, again, my input device is broken. I apologize. Uh, so the base area, right, is pi r squared. Base is a circle, right? The base of a cylinder is a circle. So it's pi, the radius, which is 20. Here it is down here. There's the radius from the center of the circle on, in the base to there. Now, you know, you can't see the other side of the circle, right, because it's a 3D picture. But, of course, you can picture it like this. You don't have to draw this when you're taking the test or anything like that. But you can see that there'd be a full circle all the way around here. See it? And that would be the radius of 20. So it's pi 20 squared. That's a squared. Uh, times the height. And here's the height of 15, right? That's the height of the cylinder from the top base to the bottom base, from the top circle to the bottom circle is 15. Okay, now you can use a calculator for this. You will have calculators in the test, as we mentioned. Uh, so you don't have to worry about squaring huge numbers, right? Uh, and I'm going to get 6,000 divided by 1 eighth, right? So this is 6,000 pi, and then I'm going to divide it by 1 eighth, okay? So I'm, I'm not going to divide by 8 just yet. I'm just going to put the 6,000, which is the volume of the whole thing, because you may have done that first, right? You may have just found that volume. Uh, so I wanted to have the same numbers you have, uh, divided by 8, okay? And that's the volume of the slice, right? And we probably should put, I think this was no units. Okay, so it's going to be units cubed, right? So we'll just say units cubed. And again, I'm going to have trouble writing English here, so bear with me. 
Okay, um, now, what's the volume of the remaining piece? Well, it's got to be the volume of the whole thing, which is 6,000 pi. We did that earlier in the problem, right? So we're going to take 6,000 pi, and we're going to subtract 6,000 pi over 8, right? Now, if you get to this point here, you've got, you know, 9 out of 10 points out of 10 point problem, right? And then we'll just worry about getting common denominators and all that stuff, right? But actually, I'm going to reduce, I think. Um, let me reduce this first, let's see. Actually, it probably won't help us to reduce yet. So um, there's a few ways you can do this, right? I'm going to make this over 8. So I want to make common denominator. You, listen, you get to this point, I'm very happy. You're going to get only a point off. But let's do it right by going to 8 here, common denominator, which means I have to multiply the top by 8, right? 8 times 6 is 48. So I'm multiplying top and bottom. And you'll have a calculator for this, right? And you get 4,800. Uh, 48,000, excuse me. Okay. So 48,000 minus 6,000 pi. 48,000 pi minus 6,000 pi. Common denominator. We're going to subtract the numerators. Is 42,000 pi. Don't forget the pi still. Over 8. Okay, and that's what's left. Now, we can reduce this, right? And there's lots of ways to reduce. Of course, you can try to divide uh, on your calculator 42,000 divided by 8 and see if it works out nice and evenly, and it does, right? If it doesn't work out nice and evenly, and we could have done that up here, by the way. We could have done that first, but um, you need practice with fractions anyway, okay? But so you could have reduced this by dividing it by 8 right away. But, or if not, as I taught you also, you can just keep crossing out even numbers and dividing by 2, right, in case it gets complicated. But you'll have a calculator. It shouldn't be a problem. All right, so the final answer here is 5250. Okay. On the answer guide that we provided you, this is pi, and of course we need units. We're just going to write u, which you can also do, by the way, but we normally give units, units cubed because it's volume, okay? Units cubed. So I think on the uh, answer sheet, they divided 6,000 by 8, so you don't have to worry about the fraction work here. Whatever. It works out to be the same thing. All right. Let's go to the next one. I love this problem because whenever you cut a figure in half, you create new surface area, right? And the one that um, we also did was about the sphere, right? So you get this whole new surface here, which is just a rectangle. In the case of the sphere, it was a circle. So just look at the shape and... Ask yourself, what do you add? I'm talking about for surface area here, when you cut it open. Volume's easy, right? We just cut this in half, so it's going to be a half cylinder for volume. But for surface area, we're going to take half the normal surface area, but add this shaded region, which normally would not be exposed when you cut something. It's probably the only real uh, thinking conceptual thing that we ask you to do in this unit, rather than kind of just plugging in formulas is when we cut something open and what happens at a surface area. We've discussed it many times and it's on all the answer sheets, so I expect everybody to get this right. Okay, so the volume of a regular cylinder, so let's just do volume of a cylinder instead of a half cylinder. Right? We'll do the whole thing, then we'll worry about dividing by two. Would be <clears throat> base area times height. So it's pi, the base is a circle, pi r squared, obviously six is the radius from the center to the edge here, times the height, right? Times the height. And that's just uh, 36 times 20, which is 720 pi. Don't forget the pi. A lot of you dropped the pi out uh, on your last test, so be careful. Okay. And uh, it's units cubed. I don't think they give me any dimensions here. So units cubed. I'm just not going to write it right now because my finger is going to cramp up from trying to use the mouse pad here. And then, you know, volume of a half cylinder. You don't really even have to go to this of a half C, right, of a half cylinder, would just be this cut in half, right? So it's just going to be 360 pi. Just divide by 2 in your calculator. Don't forget, you're not dividing the pi by 2, right? This is like an X, this pi. It's just half, right? 360 pi. But I mean, it's times pi. Okay, the surface area, a little tougher. I have to take half the normal surface area. So the normal surface area of a cylinder is two circles, right? So it's 2 pi r squared. Right, two circles, and I should have put it the R in there actually. So let's do that. Two pi six squared. Okay. 
uh, times the height, right? I'm sorry, not times the height, plus, excuse me, plus the lateral area, okay? And the lateral area, if you remember, was 2 pi r h, okay? And I derived that in class, though you don't, know if, you don't have to know why that is true, 2 pi r h. And again, you'll have this formula on your on your test. Okay. All right, now, there's a couple of ways to do this, right? We're going to divide it in half, and then we're going to add something. So I'm going to do that a little quick way here, just because it's uh, going to save me some writing here. But you could simply find the surface area, get your answer, divide it by two, and then add the blue rectangle, the blue shaded region up here that we talked about earlier, okay? But I'll just show you another trick here, which is um, to simply reduce by two. See, so if I divide both of these by two, that would save me some time, see? So now I have half the surface area because each term is divided by two. A little tricky to do that. I'd probably recommend you simply add all this together, but I'm just trying to save a little time in writing here. And then I'm gonna add, I'll use it in red, although maybe I should, have done, well, okay, I'll show you this red. I'm gonna add this red shaded region, right? That's where we get this rectangle. Now be careful, the rectangle has dimensions of 12, not six, right, it's diameter, so it's 12 by 20. Remember, that's 20 because this is 20 down here, right, the length. Okay, so we're just going to add 12 by 20. So 12 times 20, rectangle is base times height, right? So 12 times, that's a times there, 20. So again, sorry for the writing, but okay. So let's take my calculator. Now notice this is pi, this is pi, and this is not pi, right? So do not mix these. These are not like terms. So let's mix the two pi terms. So that's, I know it's hard to see here, but this is 6 squared. That's right, so that's 36 pi plus 6 times 20 pi. So 6 times 20 is 120, and this is 36. So that's a total of 156 pi. And you can see this work, of course, on the answer sheet too. Okay, plus um, 12 times 20, right, which I think is 240, it is 240. No pi, right? Be careful, there's no pi. Again, uh, and I'm hopefully you're watching through the whole video here. You do not, do not want to multiply by pi unless we said round to the tenth place. It doesn't say that, so by default, we're going to leave everything in pi term and radical terms, etc. etc. Now, the reason I put parentheses around this is because we have to say units squared. And each of those has to have units squared, so it's just easy to put a parentheses. By the way, this one is units cubed, of course, and you'll see this done correctly on the answer sheet. Okay. All right. This one gave people a lot of trouble. Sorry, just ignore this. This is from the copy and paste. This week gave a lot of people a lot of trouble. I don't know why, actually, but uh, my guess is because of the radicals and people still make mistakes with multiplying square roots. Okay. So it's the surface area of a cube. Now, it's the same as if it was a rectangular base. The only difference is for, for volume, right, is that you can kind of cheat a little bit and just say, well, all three numbers are the same, so I can just cube that. But that runs people, you know, people run into a lot of problems when they try to do that. So I always recommend to write things three times, which will probably kill my wrist here doing it this, this way. So I may cheat a little bit, right? Um, and copy and paste. So, no, not going to work. Right, times four radical three, times four radical three. It's always better to write things that are getting cubed, for example, three times or squared two times. It's always better to write them out. You tend to make less mistakes that way, okay? All right, now this should, this is algebra one, even pre-algebra, uh, really algebra one. So, but people still struggle with this, right? So four times four times four, right, or four cubed is 64, right? We just take the number, because this is all multiplication. This is four times radical three times four times radical three times four times radical three. So we're just multiplying everything together. So we're just multiplying three of the numbers together first, and then we're multiplying these three numbers together first. Now, radical three times radical three is radical nine. A lot of you, I don't know what where this comes from, but a lot of you write square root of nine equals square root of three, right? That's not true. Don't do this, right? I say, what is the square root of 9? You're like, square root of 3. No, you drop the square root. You're using up the square root to get to 3, right? So please don't do that, right? 
So the square root of 9 is equal to the number 3 without a square root over the top of it, right? Just think about it. Put in both in your calculator, you're going to get, the, and you'll have a calculator in the test. So if you put a square root and you think that's the right answer, try it in the calculator, see if you get the same answer. Okay, so two of these, this times this, right, makes square root of 9, which is 3, right? So that's times 3. And then this guy's left alone because he doesn't have a pair, right? So it's times radical 3. And there's nothing else you can do. He just kind of hangs out there. Okay. Uh, and 64 times 3 is 192, and the radical 3 just stays there. So it's 192 radical 3. Okay, and that's units cubed. Sorry again for the sloppiness. It's the best I can do. It will be very clean and very nice and easy to follow on the answer guide. Um, this is just really a supplement to that. Okay, and then surface area, right, is that plus this, right, plus the four on the outside. So normally you would do all six of these separately, right, but we can kind of cheat a little bit here because the, um, they're all the same. That's not always the case, right? So in a rectangular prism without a square base here, um, it's not all the same, not always. So you can't always do this, but we're just going to basically do one of these bases, the red base here, and then we're going to multiply it by 6, because in a cube, we have that luxury, okay? Uh, so the surface area is just 6 of the same thing, right? So it's 6. You can write them all separately, and we often do that for rectangular prisms, for example, um, of what? Of 4 radical 3 times 4 radical 3, right? Or if you want to write 4 radical 3 squared, but you know how dangerous that is, so... I think I'll just write 4 radical 3 times 4 radical 3, right? That's the base area. I know I should have color-coded it better, but well, maybe I'll go here and do that, right? So this whole green base. By the way, this is true for any of the sides. You don't have to do this base. It could be the top only because it's a cube, right? Okay. So let's find that base area, and then each face would be, well, the other base and the other four faces, so the lateral area would be four of them, and the two base areas would be the two of them, but again, they're all the same in a cube, so let's do it, right? So it's four times four is 16, and radical three times radical three, uh, I'll do that out, even though it can be a little painful, is, right, is 16 times three because radical 3 times radical 3 is 3. It's the square root of 9, it is 3, okay? So 16 times 3 times 6 is 288. By the way, if I make a math mistake here, just check the answer guides. The answer guides were checked by two teachers, uh, and just because I'm struggling with the uh, hard, lack of hardware here, I might make a mistake. I don't think so, but I might make a mistake. So if you see something and you're like, what, I can't get that answer, um, just check the answer guides that are on the drive that have all of these problems worked out. All right. All right. I think we're going to do one more problem, and I want to do this one because this one is the one I didn't do in class. I think, um, again, the answer key is on the drive, but I didn't get to this one. Uh, it's not too crazy. Okay, so the lunchbox below is made up of a rectangular prism and a half cylinder, right? So it's not a perfect half cylinder, we're, so obviously this would not be perfectly correct, but... You know, roughly, that's a half cylinder going all the way this way, right? That's a half cylinder, okay? And they don't want a surface area for this, although that would be doable. You would just take half the surface area here and then the surface area of a rectangular prism without its top on, right? So um, just be careful if somebody asked you for that, right? It would have to, you'd have to have this a closed lunchbox. It would have to be a picture of a closed lunchbox. Um, but... We're just doing volume today. This is a pretty easy one, okay? So the volume is equal to half a cylinder, okay? And I'll do it a little differently than dividing by two. I'm just going to multiply by one half. So half a cylinder, right? And uh, I'll just put CYL here, right? So this is the cylinder plus a full prism, right? Plus the full prism, right? Rectangular prism. All right, let's see if I can attempt to write rectangular prism okay well anyway you don't really need that okay so a half cylinder well the volume of a cylinder that you have to know that is base area times height and 
Um, same thing for a rectangular prism. Okay, now what's the base, right? Well, the base of a cylinder is always a circle. So we have to look here. Now, this is only a half circle, right? The full circle would be like this so because it's a half cylinder, so it's a half circle. So the radius would be from the center here to the edge. Well, if the dimensions are 16 by 4 by 4, we have to be a little smart here and realize the long dimension is 16, right? These dimensions from edge to edge, uh, from end to end is 16, and that means this is a 4 by 4 square, right? 4 by 4 squares. So you got to be a little smart there. It makes you think a little bit, right? There's no way that this could be 4, and one of these would be 16. So that's the only way it could be. 4 by 4 by 16 would be this, okay? So this is 4 from here to here. It's 4 from here to here. It's 4 from here to here. And it's 4 diameter all the way across. So that makes this radius 2. You always got to be careful that with the cylinder. When you're getting the dimensions from something that's touching like this, you have to realize that it's going to be half because 4 will be the diameter, so it's going to be 2. Okay, so the base area, uh, base area times height is the volume of a cylinder. So base area is pi r squared, right, times height. And the height is the same for everything here, 16. Okay, so, and that's a half cylinder. There's where the half is right up front here. You can't miss it. So we're going to take this number and multiply it by half. That'll give us half the volume of a full cylinder. And then... For this, it's a space area times height. Again, here is the base. So sometimes, and I, we had this problem on the triangular prism, I think, too. Sometimes the base is on its, uh, you know, is uh, I mean, the prism is on its side, so the bases are kind of facing out at you, right? You're, no, you're normally used to, like, when we first draw prisms like this, right? You're used to a box for a rectangular prism, or really, uh, specifically a square prism like this, right? So you're used to it kind of standing up like this, right? And I'll do a dotted line here real quick. So that's how you're used to seeing a prism. Well, sometimes prisms are lying on their sides, just like this cylinder is lying on its side. So just be careful. You know, turn your head to the right or left if it helps you. But And just know, we've done plenty of these problems, that sometimes you have one on the side. So this is the base, right? The base is here, where you're used to thinking the base is the bottom of the picture. It's not always the bottom of the picture. So that's you know a big tip I'd like to give you. Of course, you've seen that in many, many of the problems that you've done for homework. Okay, so again, the base area is 4 times 4, so the base area is 16. So maybe a little confusing, that's 4 by 4, right? And then this 16 is actually the height, right? So be careful. So this is 4 by 4. I probably should have done that to help you, but that's why I'm going over it. Okay, um, all right, so let's just multiply together, take your calculator out. 2 squared is 4, right? 4 times 16 is uh, 64, times a half is 32, so times 0. 0.5 is 32, right? So V, or divide by 2 is 32. So the volume equals this piece, which is 32 pi, don't lose that pi there, even though it was in the front, we always stick in the back in the end, right? So this pi, don't lose that, okay? Plus this number, right? So it's just 16 times 6 is 96, so plus... 96. Right? And that's the answer. That's the answer. I mean, we are going to do one more thing. Don't forget, we're going to put parentheses around this, and it's inches. That double line here means inches. We've done that many times. So you want to write inches cubed. Inches cubed. Okay. The rest of the problems are, I think I focused actually on R. I think this was RB, because that was the last one we gave you, okay? Um, so... Uh, all the other answers to all the other problems are online, on the drive. You can't miss them. Hopefully by watching this video, you got a lot of tips about what you have to memorize and don't memorize and what to expect, what to look for, things like putting parentheses around it with the units, so be careful with that. So hopefully that gave you a nice little overview of things to watch out for. But the rest of the problems are all on the solution guides. Please practice those problems. Good luck, and I'll see you guys on Monday.